we are surrounded by a field of milkweed or butterfly weed beloved by the monarchs and smelling so amazing right now and what beautiful little flowers milkweed is growing prolifically here and we're going to do a demo next on making milkweed capers capers traditionally are made with a plant from the mediterranean but any bud of a flowering plant that's edible like dandelion or milkweed can make a really lovely caper. Milkweed has that milky substance inside. Um, what also is going to happen next are they're going to develop those pods um, and when the pods are small about a uh, half an inch to an inch they make excellent pickles. So in a few weeks we'll go from making capers to making pickles. Now there's so much milkweed here we can easily harvest milkweed to make capers or pickles and not endanger the plants or limit what the monarchs need for their survival. Um, the flowering tops are wonderful additions to stir fries. They taste great, they're beautiful, and they have that vital nutrient that's so good in connecting you with the place that you live. So this very common weed often looks more like this because it's stepped on and trampled and cut is plantago major or plantain. Plantain is a wonderful plant to know as an emollient and also an alleviator of bee stings and bug bites. You can make a spit poultice by crushing the leaves like so and using a little bit of your own saliva or water but even with just the crushed leaves, rubbing them on your skin, you'll feel how it really softens the skin. But you can use a little bit of saliva or spit. I'm thankful I don't have many bug bites right now, but if I did, I could put this on a bug bite or bee sting and it would really help to alleviate that. Another way to use plantain is to dry wilt it, maybe with some comfrey and make a salve so that you can have a salve at the ready for when you need it. The Seed pods or strands of plantain can grow to be quite big when they're left um, unaltered like this and make a great nutritive um, food source. Um, if these are left to grow, they'll probably get to be about a foot tall and then I could dry them and grind them into a really nutritive flower. So this common plant, considered by a weed by many, is a great little native plant, fleabane. <coughs> Oh, thanks, Kermit. <laughs> In the Asteraceae family, um, Aster family, fleabane um, has been used to treat spider bites and a number of other um, small ailments. Um, but I think also is just a lovely, sweet little flower. And what so many of us consider weeds, if we can change our perception of what a weed is, really are quite beautiful and add to the ecosystem. Fleabane is um, a particular pollinator for, um, for getting the type of moth, but a really beautiful moth. So letting these plants grow um, with some of the other cultivars, I think really helps the ecosystem to remain sound and healthy. All right, a couple of fun projects for today. These are milkweed buds and they have been cut off and washed. And I'm gonna take out the ones that are flowering, put them over here, and put them into my jar. Well, that's pretty full for making capers. And if a couple of them have opened and are in there, it's absolutely fine. They just won't be a traditional tight caper. And when you're using milkweed, they have a nice little pop sometimes to them. So a few days ago, I made capers with vinegar that I boiled with a little bit of salt and I put a little bit of thyme in there and then put them in the brine. And the brine's getting to be this rosy color because even though these haven't opened yet, that rose colored essence of the flower comes out. And I keep these in the refrigerator and they'll last months. Um, great with salmon, on a bagel, or in any Italian dish that you want a little sour, salty, um, sweet taste. But today, 
we're gonna do lacto-fermented um, capers. So I have two cups of water with about a tablespoon and a half of salt that I am mixing to dilute. Now, fermentation is letting natural microbes in the air um, change the molecules of our food into either alcohol or acid or vinegar. So rather than using a pre-made vinegar like I had done with these milkweeds, we're going to see if the yeast and bacteria in the air that are quite good for our gut can change the carbohydrate that they're going to find in the milkweed to be a vinegar brine. And that in turn, when we eat it, will be really helpful for our digestive tract and in maintaining a healthy biome. And it's really easy to do. All you need to do in my clean jar with my clean, fresh picked milkweed buds. Now sometimes, because these are gonna rise to the top, people use a clean rock to hold them down. But I'm going to simply use you, you could also use a grape leaf. Grape leaves are great to put in there. Sometimes I'll use a bay leaf, but I'm just gonna put the top on, which will keep them from boiling out. Two to five days, depending on how sour you want them, you're gonna leave this out on your countertop and let a little bit of air seep in there and it's not gonna be so cold. So whatever just came in there from the air and from the containers that I was using, even though they're clean, is going to start to ferment the sugars or the carbohydrates. Um, and in about four to five days, I think I'll give it, I'll put this into the fridge so it will slow down that fermentation process and also prevent any mold from happening. And then in a few weeks, we'll give it a try and see if it tastes a little bit on the sour side, but if there's a vinegar component that would have come from that molecular change from the positive microbes around us. So another project that I have going on is some dry wilted comfrey. So you can tell this had been out in my basket in the sun for a nice amount of time. It's nice and dry, that moisture content's really low. So I'm going to chop this up. And comfrey is tough. It, still, even when dry, holds its form pretty well. But trying to get these into small pieces, because with this comfrey, I'm gonna make an oil that we can use later to make a healing salve. That's really wonderful for most any kind of skin ailment. And next to me, I have a double boiler. So I'm gonna take a bunch of this comfrey leaf the bugs have long since run out. And if I find any that, and I don't think that that is mold at all, I think it's just comfrey, but if I find any that's suspect, I'll leave it out. Now, it doesn't have to be just comfrey. Um, had, oh, yep, I do. I have a little bit of heel all in here. The purple long gone, but we'll put some of that right in there. Now, I could put a number of other things in this salve. If you want to make one that's really um, antibacterial for um, cuts and wounds, calendula would be the first um, of my choices to put in there. Calendula is wonderful. However, mine still has a ways to go in the garden until those flowers are ready. But when I make this oil, I can save it, and then when the calendula comes ready, I can make another oil and then blend those oils to make the particular salve that I want. Now, oils that you use, really you can be creative with the oils that you use. Um, olive oil is a perfectly great oil. Um, almond oil is nice too. There's grape, um, grape seed oil, there's coconut oil. Um, you can use what you like or what works for your pocketbook. Either way um, works. I like to do a blend of olive and almond. If I'm doing something that I'm really going to use for a lip balm, I'll often use coconut just because I love the taste of coconut um, and the smell. Uh, so 
And also sometimes if I'm making a real medicinal oil, I'll add in some vitamin E oil, which you can easily find at a pharmacy. So another really great option. So I need to go inside and get my little wooden stirrer and I'll keep pushing these leaves down, but I'll turn my double boiler on and boil this for about 45 minutes and the oil will turn a really vibrant green. And then I'll strain it through cheesecloth or a fine mesh strainer into my jar, label it, and have that oil for later use. When making herbal medicines, there's a couple different schools of thought and practice. And one is a standardized practice where you measure the amount of solute and solvent, um, the plant material and whatever you're using to um, dilute that or to extract the medicinal qualities from it, be it an oil or an alcohol. Um, and that is an absolutely fine way to make medicine. However, what really jives with me is the folkloric tradition where you're really feeling in yourself what feels right. Like, oh, this feels like the right amount and I'm gonna add oil till it's about covered and then I can push it down and that should make a good concentrate. So it's less of the analytical part of your brain and thinking about, okay, how does this have to be? And more of the connection and perceiving part of your brain, which is really feeling, how does this feel? Does this feel right? And connecting with the plant spirits themselves and what they tell you. So it's a bit magical. And a couple more little tidbits on today. Um, folkloric. Uh, folkloric um, traditions and folklore on Prunella vulgaris or Heal-All had been used um, by Native Americans and they really felt that this was a gift from the Great Spirit to heal all ailments of man and beast and one particular tribe would take a tea of Heal-All before they would go hunting to help with their ability to observe. And um, with comfrey or symphytum officinal, um, there's the folklore that wherever comfrey grows, there's a witch nearby. <laughs>